The Highwayman retells the story of Bonnie and Clyde, a couple that made headlines throughout America after a series of murders and bank robberies that more or less targeted government institutions and the white collar class rather than the common person. You see, both the combination of a dislike towards the government, keep in mind this time it was during the Great Depression, and a couple in love in a seemingly Robin Hood-esque story ultimately resulted in the cult following both during and after the lives of Bonnie and Clyde. But unlike the loosely historically based Robin Hood, the couple Bonnie and Clyde were very real people with a violent history. Okay, so before I begin the video, I just have to say that my videos, uh, my previous ones, have been getting copyright strike left and right. Again, they fall under fair use completely, they fall under criticism and commentary, so there is no basis for copyright strikes. That being said, I can't really do anything about it because again, I'm not really a big YouTube channel or anything. Um, so with anything, I'm just trying to use shorter clips, so I apologize in advance if I don't show enough of the movie that you would like. But I'm just trying something new, so because I'm, I'm just sick and tired of getting copyright striked. I appreciate it. Thank you guys. What distinguishes The Highwayman from past movies depicting the same subject, most famously the movie Bonnie and Clyde, released in 1967, is not only the viewpoint The Highwayman is told from, that being from the Texas Rangers, but also the lack of romanticization involved. Did Robin Hood ever shoot a gas station attended point blank in the head for four dollars and a tank of gas? We will capture Clyde Barra and his paramour. Write that down and underline it twice. The beginning of the movie has Texas Governor Ma Ferguson being asked about bringing back the Texas Rangers in order to pursue Bonnie and Clyde, an idea that she finds revolting at first. Was a time we put a pair of man killers on the trail and let them do their job. Texas Rangers was a time, and that time's passed. This is 1934, Lee, and you want to put cowboys on Bonnie and Clyde? The way this scene is presented doesn't make that much sense, actually. Since the official formation of the Texas Rangers in 1835, the Rangers weren't ever fully disbanded. Yes, at times their numbers fluctuated, and their influence did too. But the movie simply makes it look like the Texas Rangers have been gone for a while. Second of all, it is true that Ma Ferguson, at the time she was governor, uh, the Rangers were not as prominent as they were in the past. But this is because lots of the rangers chose to quit on their own free will following Ferguson being elected as protest to her policy against the rangers, which she indeed did refer to as vigilantes. So although she was against the idea of rangers running around enforcing the law, she certainly should have been at least aware of their existence. Another sign is that Ma's portrayed as almost too good, and although I'm not denying the fact that she is regardless a remarkable woman, her terms as governor, notably her first term, it was not without controversy. There was much speculation and evidence that she gave up pardons in order to receive bribes, which she would then give to her husband. I don't really blame the movie for not giving out this information, just because, that, again, this movie is about Bonnie and Clyde and the Highwaymen, not about Ma Ferguson as governor. Another problem with characters is the portrayal of Bonnie for the moments we do see her. Bonnie takes a more direct role in both the murder and crimes committed. Even in the beginning of the movie, we see Bonnie shooting a Thompson submachine gun, despite in real life Clyde was doing the shooting. In the movie, we see Bonnie shoot a wounded police officer that's on the ground. Unarmed, she coldly shoots him in the face. This, to our knowledge at least, simply never happened. I should also include that in real life, it was a milkman that said Bonnie shot a police officer that was down on the ground. But other eyewitnesses contradict this story, so in that regards, we may never know what really happened. Bonnie also had a limp in real life from a car accident, so I actually applaud the movie for including that. How's the view from up there, Mr. Hoover? You high flying sissy. I like that scene because the FBI director at the time, Edgar Hoover, tried really, really hard to promote the FBI. This means that Hoover pretty much portrayed himself as being more directly involved in the capture and killing of criminals such as Bonnie and Clyde, as well as other ones such as Machine Gun Kelly. No, 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 no not the rapper, the actual gangster. Hoover essentially tried to take more credit than he deserved, despite people like Frank Hamer and the local law enforcement being the real ones deserving the credit. If it's Bonnie and Clyde you're looking for, we didn't see him. And if I did, all the luck to them. They only take him from the banks, or they take him from the poor folk, like me. There's a peace officer, died in a puddle himself back in Dallas. As far as I've researched, this specific incident where Frank goes crazy and points a loaded revolver at a local never happened. That being said, I completely understand why the scene was included. Since Bonnie and Clyde has such a cult status with a common person, it made the jobs of law enforcement trying to pin them down extremely hard. This scene sort of just captures the frustration of the Texas Rangers along with the next scene. We then see Frank and Manny pull into a town and ask the locals about Bonnie and Clyde. Despite being an obvious lie, the town claims to know nothing about the whereabouts of the couple. The Texas Rangers only get information on Bonnie and Clyde when they ask a small girl who clearly does not understand the gravity of the situation. 
masterful. Well, why don't you just get out and beat the hell out of everybody? The lady gave it to me. You folks need some help? Sweetie. I've said it before so I won't spend too much more time on it, but again Bonnie never took this director of a role in the crimes committed. If anything, Bonnie's involvement is by far the largest historical inaccuracy in this film. Unlike what's shown in the movie, Frank and Manny would never get this close to Bonnie and Clyde until the final ambush that kills the couple. This scene was just probably added for more drama. Redemption. There's something I want to say. Here. He wasn't born that way. He, he wasn't born with no dark soul. Hamer goes to Clyde's house and confronts the father, which then Clyde's father expresses how much he still loves his son. Both Bonnie and Clyde still love their parents and still contacted them regularly. Although, obviously, they weren't stupid enough to do it in their own house. They had ran secret meetings with their parents. I've got no problem with the movie trying to humanize Bonnie and Clyde without romanticizing them. So, in that regard, go ahead. Now we finally come to the scene that the movie has been building up to. Stick him up. So yeah, that's pretty much how Bonnie and Clyde died, shot in the side of a road, ambushed with rifles and machine guns. The part I would say that the movie underplayed was just how crazy the crowd was when the bodies of Bonnie and Clyde passed by. Not only were people cutting off Bonnie's blood soaked hair as souvenirs, but a person in the crowd reported they even tried to cut off Clyde's trigger finger. In the end, 10,000 people would view Clyde at his funeral, and 20,000 would view Bonnie at her funeral. The nation has been freed from the worst killing rampage in its history. Retribution has been served, and J. Edgar Hoover has issued a formal... The Highwayman is not an action movie. Don't watch it expecting a lot of high-speed chases and shootouts. Instead, it is respectful to the real history behind Bonnie and Clyde, but most of all, it doesn't romanticize a series of tragic events. 